the brooms. Yeah. Use them to sweep. Um, the purpose of sweeping, if you guys, when you come over to where the, the sheets are set up, you can see on the ice it's kind of, uh, it looks like they're little frozen droplets of water. It's called a pebble. And when you sweep, you're actually melting the pebble just a little bit. And so that creates a very, very thin layer of water, which helps the rock go further. So that's why you sweep. It also will help the rock either hold the line or, in our case, usually make it curl more. <laughs> um, not normally. The that purpose happens. is to keep it straight. Right. Okay. Unfortunately, here it, it makes it fall more. Yeah. <laughs> this is hockey ice, not curling ice. Um, these are the stones. They're 42 pounds, solid granite. Um, I don't recommend especially when you have the slider on, they make you fall over. Caps are similar to starting blocks on track. This is how you get your traction on the ice to deliver your stone. Deliver a stone means that's how you throw it down the ice. Um, it, it matters which side you stand on, depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed, but we'll go over that. Things you guys have in your hands, or possibly on your feet already, are sliders, and they're actually made out of Teflon, and they're to help you slide better on the ice because your shoes aren't slippery enough and that'll help you get the stone further down the sheet of ice. Um, am I gonna, how far am I gonna slide with this slider? You probably won't slide very far at first. You'll probably fall over. Okay. <laughs> it depends on your form. It does yeah. depend on your form. The furthest you can slide with the rock in your hand is to that black line across there. They call that a hog line. Okay. Uh, you might not get out there today. <laughs> if, you, if you release the rock by the time you're at the top of the house, you're doing well. Okay. So that's what the, the concentric circles are called. They're called a house. We have the center of the house, which is called the button. And then we have a 4-foot, 8-foot, and 12-foot circle. So the object is to get your stones in the house. But not this one, the one way down there. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. That was feeling pretty good until she said that. That's a long way. How, how far is that? Line. I'm not sure how far it is. About 134 feet. Okay. <laughs> There's another uh, black line at the other end, we call them hog lines, and for your stone to stay in play, it has to be on the opposite side, all the way across that black line. If it comes out the back of the house, it's taken out of play, so there's only a certain area you can keep your stones in play. Um, part of curling is when you deliver the stone, if you, if you watch during the Olympics at all, they uh, would make it spin when they let it go, and that's called the handle, and that's where the term curling comes from. So why it skip. curls going down the ice. Right. If you let it go just straight, it will naturally start curling one way or the other. But, but you, you have don't no know control. which way it will curl. So you put an intentional curl on it so that you can judge the rock better. And there are Is it that that's sort of the secret as far as it sort of is. That's that's <laughs> what makes the game. That's how you can get it around other okay. stones. Right. So you can you can basically throw it you know, a foot away from a stone at the opposite end, and if you put the right handle, you can get it to curl around and end up behind it. So now that's, that stone in front of it is acting like a guard, so no one can hit your stone. Yeah, we're not going to be able to do that. You might be able to. <laughs> no, no. Some of you might get really lucky. You know. <laughs> Come on, John, get rid of that defeatist attitude. <laughs> like I said, you ready to lose? Mm, yeah, I am. <laughs> um, on each curling team, there are four people. There's the lead, the second, the vice skip, and the skip. The skip's kind of like the captain. They stand down there, and they're, they're usually your person who comes up with the strategy of the game, um, where they want you to throw the stone. And each person throws two stones. Um, they take turns with the other team, so you'll throw one, they'll throw one, you'll throw one. Um, in the game of curling, the hammer is a big deal. It's not actually a hammer. I had a couple of people ask me. The hammer is the very last stone that's thrown in, in one end. One end is when we throw all 16 down there. Um, and obviously, there's an advantage to have the last chance to score. Scoring. Scoring. We will show you the scoring. It's a lot like bocce ball, if you guys are familiar yeah. with the scoring for that, except our center stays. It doesn't okay. move around. Okay, so. Only one team. Uh, the the color of the rings doesn't matter. It's just whoever is closest to the center of the house. Oh. So no matter whether the other team has more rocks in the house, whoever's closest scores a point. And then you score one point for each of your rocks that is closer than the opponent's closest rock. So in this case, yellow would score one. And here. Red would score one because the yellow is closer than the other red stone. But now, because the two red are the closest two stones, red would score two points. Gotcha. So it's 
And it's the most points, obviously, wins, or right. is there after, a... After, <laughs> after 10 ends in the Olympics, okay. uh, whoever has the most points wins. In most uh, tournaments, it's eight ends. Okay. It, when you throw all your rocks down to the other end, everybody throws two rocks on your team. And once they're all thrown, then you count the points, and that's an end. Then you go back, throw at the other house, that's your second end. And you mark it on that scoreboard there at the back. Similar to baseball that way. You wait till you got all the rocks rolled, then you count them up. Yeah. So who's ready to throw some rocks? Do it. Curling 101.